friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Lindsay Thurston and in today's video, I'm gonna be, well, kind of throwing myself under the bus a little bit because I'm gonna be sharing 10 of my biggest home decor regrets. The things that were a total waste of money that later on I found didn't really fit my design style. As always, these are my opinions, so don't forget to share yours in the comments down below. All right, let's get into it. First up, glass top tables. I know a lot of people love them. They can look really cool and modern. They can really blend into a space. They don't call a lot of attention. They can also be great in a small space because they don't create more visual clutter. However, one thing I find is super annoying about them, they're always showing every little spot, every little ring from every glass that you sit down, even with coasters. I just feel like I end up cleaning them more than any other piece of furniture. And especially in high use areas, whether whether it's a dining table or a coffee table, having to clean every five minutes just isn't something I personally want to devote time to. Instead, try using a wood or natural stone or marble or metal table. Glass really does seem to show every spot, whereas these other materials tend to hide it a little bit better. You can use coasters, obviously to eliminate rings and things, but generally speaking, I've had great luck with wood and marble tables specifically. Right now, both of our coffee tables in our living room and den space are both marble top, and I know you might be concerned about marble. Sometimes it can absorb different things. I also have a set of marble coasters that sort of blend into the table, adding a little bit more natural texture without being super high maintenance. I'm loving a lot of vintage travel routine pieces. There's a lot of other stone options besides just marble, and you can really find something that just appeals to your personal taste. I'm a big believer in secondhand furnishings, so finding something vintage might add a really cool, interesting element to your home. Next up, I'm very, very guilty of this, too many throw pillows. I haven't always wanted to admit it, and I think both Travis and my mama have both gently tried to let me know, hey, there's a lot of pillows on the sofa. I don't know about you, but I just love sourcing throw pillows. There's so many cool styles from high-end retailers to vintage finds. I love that sort of Turkish vintage rug made into a pillow sort of situation. Those can be super awesome. Obviously, when you're at bargain stores like Ikea or Target, you can find some great cool pillows, a matching throw blanket, but often this leads to too much clutter. If you have a sofa that is packed full of throw pillows, no matter how cute they are, it does kind of come off as uninviting. I'm always wondering, you know, did I put too many on the sofa? Do people feel like they can't exactly sit down? So I'm trying to monitor that a little bit more when I'm designing spaces. I'm kind of trying to limit it to two to three throw pillows, maybe on a sofa, and really trying to analyze, do I really need a throw pillow on a chair? Some chairs, like the I'm sitting on actually do really like to pop a little throw pillow on especially if the chair is deep but when it comes to some of the other chairs in our house there just isn't room for a throw pillow and a person to sit there so I'm trying to just be a little bit more judicious in my use of throw pillows and really source the best most beautiful ones and less is more. Next up high maintenance area rugs. Sourcing the right area rug for any space can be a challenge, especially when you're working within a certain design aesthetic and budget. In my search for rugs for different spaces over the years, at times I have found myself settling for something that was good enough when I was just exhausted of searching. And sometimes that has led to big errors in the functionality of a rug. It's not just about the design style, it does have to be functional. So you have to consider what's gonna work in your space, for your family, for your pets, and for your life. Rugs that shed are too difficult to vacuum. Maybe expensive wool, beautiful hand knotted rugs look beautiful in the store and are a big investment. Often when you get them home into your own space, you can see that maybe living with that rug and dogs and kids might be a problem. Seeing more wear and tear on a rug can really be heartbreaking or maybe having to source a special vacuum can be a pain. So you might wanna really think realistically about what's gonna work for your day-to-day -day life and your design. 
buying style. And I truly believe you can find both. A lot of big retailers like Pottery Barn offer easy care rug options for families and it really makes a difference when you can just quickly clean something. Another thing is having the right cleaning products on hand. So Folex is an amazing wonder. If you watch Arvin Alano's channel at all, you've heard him mention it many, many times. I've used it for a while and it's incredible. Also, side note, great for getting things out of your car upholstery. So, you know, just being prepared for things, having those stain removers on hand, you know, from the start, really looking for a rug that's going to work for you, your life, and your lifestyle. You can also try a washable rug from companies like Ruggable. You can throw the entire rug into the washing machine and apparently it comes out beautiful and new again. I personally haven't had a Ruggable rug before, but I've heard amazing reviews online and from friends who've tried it. I personally love to source vintage rugs. I find that it's super sustainable, it's unique, it brings a little bit more layered texture and history into my home, and it's not like every other rug on the block, just making it feel like a little bit more interesting. And as far as low maintenance rugs, looking for anything that's a natural fiber is definitely going to be easier to care for over time. Things like a natural jute or seagrass, woven rugs of any kind really do last the test of time, and you can also layer rugs over the top of them for an interesting look. Some people think the layered rug thing is played out, but I personally still like it. I really love how Shay McGee adds that into her spaces and I've enjoyed trying that in our home too. Another big purchase I have always, always regretted is when I buy really bold color or bold print bedding, especially duvet sets. I can sometimes be totally won over standing in the store looking at a beautiful bold print. I really love pattern and color, but I find that when I bring those home, I regret them quite quickly. I get tired of the pattern. I move on from the love of that color. And overall, it just creates a busy vibe that isn't calming. If you love bold print duvet covers, please enjoy that. Just not for me in my space. I find that I enjoy adding a little bit of color and pattern through accessory pieces. They're a little bit easier to trade out if the season changes or my mood changes, and it just makes it a little bit more of a flexible design. And that way I can change up our bedroom without having to buy a whole new duvet set to get a new look. If you do like a bold print duvet set, you might consider looking for one that's reversible. That way, if you want to take a break from that bold color or pattern, you can flip it over and on the reverse side, you could have something a little bit more neutral or calming or just a totally different vibe from your other side of your duvet set. Try sourcing your big bed items like your duvet set, your pillowcases, sheet sets in neutral tones. It could be light or dark, just depends on what you think. I definitely think of navy blue as a neutral. I think of that sort of army green color as a neutral. So those can be some kind of ways to play around with this. And then you can layer in some color accents that are easier to change out. Next up, decorating with red. I understand this might be an unpopular opinion. And although I can appreciate red in other homes, in other designs, when I bring red pieces into my home, I feel that it pulls all the focus away from everything else in the room. And it doesn't let any of the other decor pieces shine. Often bright colors, bold colors do grab your eye's attention first making it a little harder to move your eye around the room. That's just one person's opinion and red happens to be that color for me, but I encourage you to think about all the colors of things that you're bringing into your space and think about how do they play together? Do they play nice? Are they friends? And how do they make you and your family feel when you're enjoying your space? Do they make you feel stressed and agitated or do they help you calm down after a busy day? Think about how you want to feel in your space and choose colors that help you get there. For me, I I have really enjoyed creating a color palette that I use across most of our home. And I really try to use these colors to help focus the design. It makes it easier to shop across my home. So if ever we want to freshen things up, we can just shop things from different rooms, move things around, and we can have a completely new filling space without spending any money. The next one, I honestly have a little bit of a hard time fully articulating, but I'm gonna try 
mass-produced art. As an artist myself, I had a rule years ago in my early 20s when I started sourcing things for my first home. I really wanted to support artists and cultivate a collection of art that truly represented my style and inspired me. Since then, of course, like all of us, I've been out shopping, looking for things for my home, and most recently I fell for a ton of mass-produced art in the Studio McGee Threshold collaboration with Target. You might remember if you've been around here for a while that I purchased a few of those pieces and shared them in my home designs over the year and it's been really fun to include those items in my space. They're beautiful, I really love them, but when I think about it, I really do want to use my dollar to support artists and to seek out opportunities to help artists grow and get their work out there. And especially as someone who's sharing designs on YouTube, I really want to be the kind of person that helps to highlight artists so that they can grow more of an audience for their work. I'm definitely not getting rid of those mass-produced pieces from the Studio McGee collection anytime soon, but I think in the future, as I continue to add more pieces to our home, I'm really going to try to seek out independent artists first and support them, and in the process, I'll be able to source some really unique pieces that are unlike any other space. I want to encourage you to get out there. Etsy is a great place to start. Search around, see if you can find some artists to support. My friend Caroline did this when she was sourcing a big painting for her living room years ago. She was able to work with an Etsy artist who was selling her work and give her all the colors of her home, kind of the vibe she was looking for in this abstract piece. And then she was able to commission this piece and it turned out totally beautiful. It's been one of the most stunning pieces of art that she's been able to add to her collection. And the great part about it, you know, this is not a huge artist. You know, she was able to support this person and source something really unique and special for her home on a budget. I'd love to do a roundup of my favorite Etsy sellers, so if you're interested in a video like that, let me know down in the comments and I'll get that out for you too. Another decor purchase that I have regretted over time is buying fake wood furniture. I know that sourcing furniture can be a challenge and a challenge mostly on the budget. Buying quality furniture can get crazy expensive and especially when you're looking for something in a specific design style, it can be daunting. But it's true what they say, they just don't make them like they used to and that is definitely true with furniture. I find that even on mid to higher end retail sites, you can spend hundreds of dollars on a wood piece of furniture only to scroll down into the description and see that it's actually just wood veneer. I personally would advocate for solid wood furniture whenever possible. As a DIY dork, I definitely love sometimes to take a look at an old piece and reimagine it, maybe sand it, restain it, give it new life. I also find that solid wood furniture is better on the resale market. So if you're looking to sell things secondhand, kind of shift some furniture in your space, I generally find that solid wood pieces do better on that market. Wood veneer can chip, it can get damaged in a move, it can be really difficult to fix. Proper wood filler sometimes doesn't quite match up. It can be impossible to restain if you want to change it, you're kind of stuck with it. So one thing that I would suggest, walk away from all those corporate retailers for a minute and maybe get out in the world, look in your local town, see if you can find some antique shops, some thrift shops, shops, source some beautiful things from local furniture consignment. Often you can find older pieces for a lot cheaper than these retail stores and you'll find that older pieces generally are solid wood. There's so many different options. I'm going to encourage you to get out there and find something great for a great price. Another regret I must admit is buying dark upholstered furniture. This might be more of a Lindsay thing, but let me know if this is true for you too. I do like the look of darker upholstery sometimes, but I do find that it pulls all focus to that piece of furniture and pulls focus away from anything else in the room. Although I love navy and brown as neutrals, covering an entire sofa in these colors can really make a room feel heavier, unless there's a really bold piece of art. But even then, you might have a lot of bold colors all at once, and and for me, I just kind of want a little bit more of a calming space. So I would personally suggest looking for something that's maybe more of a mid-tone or a lighter tone. And if you need to go for a darker color, if you truly want a darker colored sofa or chair, for example, maybe go for a leather option. As a pet owner, dark upholstery can be a dog hair trap. Some fabrics really latch onto the dog hair too, and they're super hard to vacuum. And who has time to vacuum your sofa every single week? That's a lot of work. 
dark. Saturated or dark colors tend to grab your eye first and might pull attention away from some of your more interesting decorative pieces. You can bring in those darker tones through your accessory pieces like throw pillows, throw blankets, art, any other sort of decorative items that you might use in your space. Coffee break. Next on my list, I know that this can be super helpful in a small space, but I'm gonna say it, storage coffee tables. Hear me out. I know that it can be super convenient to have a place to stash things away, but I find that when you have a coffee table that has a shelf underneath for storage, they often just become a clutter trap. Even if you style it, clutter just somehow accumulates. Where does it come from? Maybe that's just our home, but I in general try to avoid coffee tables with any sort of storage. I like just a very simple horizontal surface. And then I prefer to locate storage in other areas. Maybe it's the media cabinet with closed doors, or maybe it's a side table with drawers. Maybe it's even built-ins. Keeping your highest traffic area horizontal surfaces clear can make your space feel more fresh and inviting. Try opting for closed storage accent pieces, hidden baskets, maybe closed media cabinets to stash away everything you want hidden in your space. Last but not least, I'm super guilty of this one in the past, you guys, buying too many things from one store. We've all been there, right? Fallen in love with the catalog, fallen in love with the showroom. It starts with one piece and then you start to add a bit more and more and more. And then every time you think home decor, you go to that one website, that one store. Whatever the store is, even if it carries multiple brands, each retailer has its own aesthetic. And I understand that that might match with your design style, but if your design style becomes the design style of one store or one one website or one catalog, it can often leave your space a little bit flat. And I just really would encourage you to pursue a lot of different things. Look at all the options, find the things that are uniquely you and not just a regurgitation of the West Elm catalog. In the past, I totally did this. I fell hard for West Elm. It started with a sofa, then it extended to an accent chair, then it was a side table, then it was a dining nook table. And it just became over and over again, I started accumulating dishes and towels, and I found that every time I thought about my home, I went straight for West Elm. When I'd go to offer up, I would search West Elm furniture. It was too much, and as much as I love that mid-century modern aesthetic, nothing against West Elm or any of your favorite retailers, I love my West Elm pieces, and I'm definitely not parting with them anytime soon, but I find that when I am a little bit more well-rounded, I look for things on the secondhand market, I look at other retailers, I'm sourcing, things vintage or Etsy or eBay, it all comes together to create the unique design style that is our home, not just the West Elm catalog. Don't let your unique design style get lost. Don't let your home become the catalog. Try branching out and sourcing items in new ways. Find those unique pieces that fit your unique design tastes. Interior design is totally subjective. It can be a challenge to number one, define your design style, and number two, source items that fit your design style while working on a budget. Although so many YouTube videos and HGTV shows make it look like you snap your fingers and the room is hashtag goals, often it takes quite a long time to source the right pieces, to find the right mix, and create a home that you love on a budget that truly reflects your design style. The best spaces showcase the homeowner's personality, unique interests, and develop over time. Think like a designer and carefully curate each piece that you bring into your space, really consider considering how it plays with the other items so that you can achieve your ultimate design vision. You got this. As always, these are my opinions, so don't forget to share yours in the comments down below. Check me out on Instagram for some photos of our home and an inside look into my design process. Like this video and subscribe for more interior design and home decor tips. Next week, I'm gonna be sharing a little painting update with you in our new home. I'm gonna walk you through, show you kind of what the paint is looking like, and I'm gonna share six different colors that I'm testing for our guest bedroom. And you guys, I need your help. Until then, you might enjoy my recent video on 10 things you can donate today to get closer to your design goals. I just love purging. I don't know about you guys, but it feels so good to unload some old things. I'll also link my video on 10 home decor items you can source on the cheap at the thrift store. I'm talking stuff that looks designer and I'll see you in the next video. Bye my friends.